The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Blast Three Brain Cells, and the host between Taramina's on OAA Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. This week we got a big show here this week. We're going to have interviews from the three remaining football coaches still in the postseason. Um, we're going to talk to all three coaches. We've got Zach Hilbers, we got Aaron Marshall, and Rob Oden. Um, the three coaches remain here. So we're going to start with um, Wes Bloomfield, their football coach. We've got Coach Zach Hilbers here. Coach, welcome back to the podcast. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to just, you know, still be playing football. Um, talk about that game with Clark. With Clarkston. I mean, like, obviously, that was a crazy, crazy game. I mean, obviously, you had the field goal block, start off the game down 20 to nothing. So what was your thought process during that game? Well, you, you said it, man. It was a crazy, crazy game. And I know uh, that um, they were kind of involved in a crazy one the week before up at Lake Orient. You know, they played in back-to-back kind of roller coasters. Um yeah, I mean, the, the start of the game was less than ideal. They had a great drive to start the game. We didn't feel the kick correctly, and they, they scored on a reverse pass that was, you know, really well-timed and executed. Um, and then we thought we, you know, we kind of, you know, caught our breath and buckled down, but um, maybe a third and 12 from their own four-yard line, you know, um, Collins found uh, Stevens up the sideline. We were in pretty good coverage. Kid just made a play and broke it. And that's something you can say about the Clarkston kids for like the last month or so, really the whole year, is that their studs stepped up and made big play after big play. And they did against us, too. Uh, we were just able, luckily, to you know kind of catch our wind, keep our composure, trust, uh, trust the game plan, trust the stuff, and kind of crawl our way back into it. Um, talk about, obviously, when you look at – when you look at that game, you started that comeback. Obviously, that touchdown by Nigel started it off, and then you got a big touchdown. Um, you know, I mean, they got you got it within um, you got it within twenty two um, twenty to fourteen, and then of course talk about Rick's touchdown, that forty two yard play. I mean, like that gave you guys the lead. So when you guys took the lead there, what were, I know on a fourth down and one by 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 all means. So talk about you know what I mean the comeback you know talk about how you guys came back with that never say die attitude that you guys have always been over there for the L boys oh uh, yeah it was definitely like you know it was a weird game in that you know they jumped out to 20 to nothing very quickly and we used almost all the clock trying to crawl our way back into it and you know just like I said their kids stepped up and made big plays you know our kids did in a lot of and a lot of uh uh, chances as well like you know you mentioned the fourth and one and that sometimes happens on short yardage if you can get like a crease and break free um you kind of usually teams load the line up a little bit and that's what we were able to have happen you know our quarterback's a you know four-year varsity kid and he stepped up and made a huge play when we needed it um and then of course you know i think what going back to that final drive you need a defensive stop and then you know they made that big play on that fourth and nine to cozen um you know, to get it down to your, I think it was at your two yard line and then there was a penalty. So that, so talk about what was your thought process going, thinking about, you know, when Clarkson brought out their field goal team and you know, what were you think? What was your mindset hoping to get a block kick? You know what I mean? I mean, I guess in a way it was strangely confident. You know, I believed that the kids could get the job done. Um, you know, we, we, we practiced it. We actually blocked the kick the week before against Eisenhower. So we went with a pretty similar, similar approach and, uh, called timeout, got them together, told them where we were lining up. And I said, this is, this is what we got to do. We got to go out there and do it. And they, they executed. They I mean, I went back and rewatched it. I think the, the snap hold and, and Clarkson's timing was, was pretty good. It wasn't like it was slowed or anything like that. We just, we did a good job of, I guess, executing in the moment where we really, really needed to. And then, of course, Nigel blocking that um, field goal block. That was a huge play. You know, that sent your sideline to pandemonium. And then, you know, I guess, you know, explain the late the late game process. And I know, I think uh, the officials called an unsportsmanlike penalty against you guys. And, um, you know, and they said, but they um, determined that the game was over after that. So what was your thought process there? Well, block kick behind the line of scrimmage is a live ball. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, luckily for us, Jameer Benjamin pounced on it and recovered it almost instantaneously and immediately. 
And we did have some kids on our sideline that rushed the field, kind of in excitement, thinking the game was over. But, you know, it's a live ball. And really what happened is they got in Jameer's way. He, he would have returned it back for a touchdown, it looked like. But they uh, they blew that dead. And that's what the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty was, was the players rushing the field after the block. Um, so we go over those situations. Luckily, he, in that moment, knew that he had to get on the football. Because uh, if he hadn't gotten on the football, that could have been a really different ending for us. Yeah. And... um I do want to go back to the game prior to that against Eisenhower at Swinehart. Um, yeah. That controversial call that you had late in the um, first half. I want what, what was your initial thought process of that? Because I'm looking at that game. I'm watching that game. I'm going like, uh, fishing looks a little suspect here. So go by your thought process of that game against Eisenhower. Well, I mean, Eisenhower's a really good team. Really, mm-hmm. really physical. They're hard to score against. And, you know, we got it down to their four-yard line right before the half. And, you know, we're at least confident in getting our timeout called and at least a field goal attempt, um, you know, to try to take the lead at halftime. And uh, I was told, my, the explanation that was given to me was that my timeout signal looked like a play call. And that's why the timeout was not awarded. And, you know, that was frustrating. But in that moment, like, you can't really do anything. You know, we, we actually waited five or 10 minutes before we talked to the kids at halftime, let their emotions cool and and kind of try to collect everybody and say like, Hey, this is the situation. Like we're still tied and we know we can move the ball. We just got to finish. And we were able to do it. And talk about that game, that defense, obviously Jaden's pick six. And then of course he got another interception there. Um, Your defense in that game against Eisenhower, which is absolutely magnificent. Obviously the pick six, the, um, you guys did a really good job on Preston Crumb was a four year starter there. Um, yeah. How, I mean, like, obviously, talk about that. De- talk about Jay, how Jalen's been doing for you guys. Yeah, Preston Crumb's a heck of a player, and we knew he was playing with a ton of confidence. We just had to get him off a of rhythm because when he's in a rhythm, man, and his, he's got some good receivers too. Um, so we were able to kind of disrupt some timing, get him out of rhythm. And like you said, Jaden Allos has really stepped up over the last four or five weeks on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, proving he can be a two-way player and a, an effective two-way player and uh, really just being a Swiss Army knife for us on both sides of the football. And another player that's been playing really well on both sides of the ball is your Colorado commit, Brandon Davis Swain. I mean, like, you look at what he's been doing. I mean, both sides of the ball, he's been, he's been playing really good. I mean, he's, he's made some big plays defensively. Offensively, he's been there when he needed him. When he, I mean, like, obviously he had a big touchdown against Eisenhower. Um, tell me how Brandon Davis Swain has been doing for you guys. Yeah, I'm not sure he came off the field um, against Clarkson on offense or defense. We, we took him off of some special teams units just to make sure he had a chance to, to catch his breath, to be honest. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to it, like this time of year, you got to win and lose with your best players on the field. And he's obviously one of those. Um, he can do everything. I think he's one of the best blocking, like, forget tight ends or receivers like players in the state of Michigan. Like we gave him the task and Nigel um, against Eisenhower of blocking their stud linebacker. We gave him the task of trying to block Des Stevens last week and he did a good job. Um, and those are, those are really good players. You know what I mean? And Brandon just stepped up and did it. He catches passes when we need him to, uh, he blocks when we need him to, he runs the football when we need him to. And I think his body of work on defense speaks for itself. And, and, of course, obviously talk about Rick. I mean, obviously, four-year starter, um, you know, he's made clutch after clutch plays. I mean, like, talk about how Rick – I mean, he had three touchdowns against Eisenhower. Then he had um, then he had the touchdown again. Then he had that big touchdown against Clarkson. So talk about how Rick's confidence has been for you guys um, during this postseason run. Man, I'm, I'm so proud of him because he played well against Ike, like you mentioned, and he did not have the best game going against Clarkson until the end. Like, he never wavered his focus. He never, I guess, yeah, lost any of that. He was a calm, collected leader. He knew we could get the job done. We just had to go out and execute. Um, and obviously, he was the one that made the, the big play at the end on the fourth and one. So, I mean, he's been through everything. You know, as a freshman, he was up there. He, he saw us go to Ford Field and, and get the job done against Davison. You know, he saw us lose in a regional as a sophomore and then lose in the first round as a junior. So he's been through all, all sides of it, and he knows what it takes to get the job done. And then, of course, talk about, of course, um, the um, the field right now. You got this week in the state semifinals a rematch against Southfield Arson Tech. Of course, he won week eight's matchup 31-20 in that game. So what is your thought process when you say, 
look, it's another it's an old, another familiar OA opponent. You know, he's taking on the very good South Anderson Tech team coming up. It'll be at Troy on Saturday afternoon. So what's your thought process on the location and also on playing against South Anderson Tech? Well, it's probably an understatement, to be honest. They're, they're exceptionally talented. Their quarterback, you've heard about him since he was in seventh grade, maybe. And he's more than lived up to expectations, in my opinion. Um He's playing really well. Their receivers are playing really well. They're running the football better than I thought they were, you know, earlier in the year. Um, so they're just they're just dangerous in so many different ways. Um, you know, in terms of like where we're playing and stuff, yeah, we don't care too much about that. You know, it's it's a neutral site. It's Troy High School for us. Like whatever that works, we'll show up. I'm sure, you know, they're kind of feeling the same way. Um, the fact that it's a rematch, yeah, it definitely makes it harder. But we already had two of those in the playoffs, and you know, we, we didn't technically play Ike this year, but we played them the last two years. So we've really played a bunch of teams that we're familiar with, and that are also familiar with us. And then, of course, you know, I mean, like, obviously, on the other side of the bracket, you know what I mean? We can break this one down. I mean, like, um, talk about, you know what I mean, on the other side. I mean, you, you're very familiar with Davison, obviously, playing against them um, a couple years ago. Um, and then and then you also with Belleville as well. So you, both, so you know both those teams inside out. So talk about what those two teams bring. Like, let's say if you knock off A&T and having to deal with, with one of those two teams. I mean, yeah, yeah. I hope we get a chance to play them, you know, and get through this week and, and just have an opportunity to play either one. Um, Southfield's going to be, like I said, really, really tough to beat. Um, but yeah, you're, they're, they're really talented on the other, other side of the football too. Belleville's success the last three and a half, four years, whatever it is, like that speaks for itself. You know, like the, the guys they have all over the field, you know, the quarterback gets a lot of pub, but Jeremiah Beasley's tremendous. Their offensive defensive line is tremendous. Um, you know, their skilled players are very good players and Davison. I mean, I watched their game against Rockford. They're, they're physical. They're huge. They're physical. They got some guys that'll kind of hit, come up and hit you. And they also have some athletes on the outside too. So that's a good football team. I mean, I think that'll, they'll be able to, you know, line up and compete with Belleville. They won't get pushed around and you know, I have no idea what's going to happen with the outcome, but you know, they're not going to roll over. I know that much. Before I let you go, Coach, um, obviously, um, you know, looking at looking at you guys going forward, of course, that big one with Southfield Arts and Tech um, coming up, and I, I think it's going to be a heck of a game between those against you against um in that in the, in the OA rematch. Um, so, what is your thought process to say this week to the kids? You know what I mean? Getting ready for another familiar opponent. Well, I guess the thought process with the kids is, is kind of this, um, you know, Clarkson obviously beat us in the regular season. and We were able to get the rematch um, against them in the playoffs. And I told them, you know, if, if you could pick which game you wanted to win, I think we would all take it this way, right? Losing the regular season and winning the playoffs. And you know what? Southfield's got that exact same opportunity that we had, right? They can avenge their loss and go to the state finals if we don't get the job done. So you really like week eight it might give us a little confidence that you know you can get the job done, but it means absolutely nothing because they're trying to get to the same place we are. They're obviously very, very talented, they're a really good football team. And uh, you know, they're looking for a redemption themselves. And obviously, you know, with A and T, you know they're a veteran heavy team as well. I mean, we talked as the Marshall, we talked about their um, wide receivers, obviously. They just knocked off Chippewa Valley. Um, obviously, you know, they love to throw the ball a lot, but the balance that they bring, you know what I mean? So that should be a really interesting matchup for you guys, especially defensively going against a team like, um, like A&T, whose def defense has really been improved the last couple of weeks. Oh yeah. I mean, they look great. Um, you know, they, they looked really good against Chippewa Valley. who's was a good football team, like a big physical team with athletes. <laughs> they looked really good against Cast Tech, which you could say the same thing about, um, and you're right. I mean, they can throw the ball obviously all over the place with the quarterback they have and the receivers they have, but the quarterback's a great runner too. And, and they've been running the ball with like power run game with their backs um, a lot better like the last few weeks. So they're adding like new wrinkles to their offense, which really just makes them harder, harder to defend. And that's going to make it really interesting, obviously. So before I let you go coach and um, obviously um you know, I mean, like, final thoughts here. I mean, like, um, what's it going to take for West Bloomfield to get back to Ford Field this year? 
I mean, all it's going to take is what it comes down to is we got to do our jobs. We have to do our jobs um, more efficiently and cleaner. Defense played pretty good with a few exceptions against Clarkston. And uh, what it comes down to is like, you can't have exceptions as you move up in the playoffs because any one mistake could be the one that, you know, sinks your team. Uh, offense thought we had a couple turnovers that we had long drives that we didn't get points out of. You know, that can come back to kill you, too. So, I mean, it's it's all the little things and it's a cumulative effect in, in, a, in a sport like this that we just got to make sure we know our stuff and play clean football. Okay, thank you really much, Coach Westman with Coach Jack Hilbert here. Thank you um, for joining us this week here on the podcast. Good luck this week, obviously, against Southfield Arson Tech at Troy High School. And uh, wish you guys the best of luck going forward. Thanks, man. Yep. Okay. Yep. That is West Bloomfield coach Zach Kilbers here on the podcast here talking the Lakers. Um, when we come back, we're gonna talk. Of, we're gonna talk to Southfield Arts and Tech coach Aaron Marshall um, about how playing West Bloomfield in his postseason run is here on OA now. Okay. Welcome back to the podcast. Here we got the coach of the Warriors, Coach Aaron Marshall here. Coach, um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Oh, no problem. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, obviously, when you look at Southfield, um, the path that you guys have had this postseason, of course, winning the white this year. Um, and then, of course, um, talk about how the white has gotten you guys prepared for this um, this postseason. Uh, you, just, you know, it's great competition in the white um, every every year, just like the red. Uh, you know, we cross over with the red. So uh, we open up, you know, against really good teams, Division One. Um you know, close out the season versus a good team. So our schedule has always been, you know, pretty loaded and, and you know, pretty, you know, prepare us to get into put in position, you know, to be battle tested to get ready for the playoffs. So the white, absolutely, man, week in, week out, bunch of well-coached, um, you know, great athletes um, in those programs. So I think it's prepared us really well. Talk about your team, obviously, senior heavy team, obviously led, of course, by your nephew, Zeke. Um, Obviously, you look at a course. Um, how has the team been looking this postseason? Um, so far, so good, man. I mean, as you can see, we um, we've grown a lot. Uh, you know, we had a great regular season. In the postseason, you know, we've made some really good strides, and you know, kind of hitting, you know, on all cylinders on all phases of the game, uh, which has really helped us out a lot. Um, of course, talk about your postseason run. Obviously, you took on Dearborn Fortson first um, at home. Um, obviously, you know that Dearborn Forsen traditionally has been a well-coached team. Um, what was your initial thought process when you found out you were playing Dearborn Forsen first? Um, you know, we knew they'd be an experienced team, right? They got experienced coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Like you say, that, that that school and that you know program has been there before. So we knew we'd get everything that they had, man. So we just had to have a great week of practice. You know, we had to prepare, um, you know, watching film on them, you know, kind of learn them a little bit. So, you know, it was really – um, a good week for us we had, which allowed us to have a good game. We had a great preparation week leading up into that game. Mm -hmm. And then and then come down the next game, a rematch against Detroit Cass Tech. I think it was your fifth matchup in them. I think it was your fifth matchup in six years, I mean, in two years against them. So talk about talk about having to play a rematch against a very good Detroit Cass Tech team. Um, obviously, they know you. You know them. So... Talk about in in your eyes, you know, when you play seeing them again. Yeah, uh, you know, we knew it happened at some point. No different than last year, like you said. You know, we played multiple times last year. We beat them week one, and they beat us in the playoffs. This year, we beat them week one, and uh, we were fortunate enough to pull the victory out um, and beat them this year in the playoffs. So, again, I mean, well coached program, man. They got a great tradition over there. Uh, we knew they'd come ready to play. Um, so, so, you know, we kind of got to control what we can control and, and through the week, and we did just that, uh, which, you know, allowed us to have a victory. You know, it's always hard to be a team twice in one year, and especially that type of program, you know what I Absolutely. mean? And Absolutely. And obviously with them, um, you know, they had a, they have a very good quarterback, and you guys managed to um, – you guys managed your offense, played really well in that game, obviously, you know, and your yeah, defense as well. And your defense Correct. as well. Um. And then, of course, let's talk about your game last week. I mean, you went to Chippewa Valley. Usually, OA teams usually have a pretty tough time in Macomb County. So you went down to Chippewa Valley, took on a really good Scott Merchant team. You took on a really good high-octane offense that Chippewa Valley had with um, Andrew Schuster at quarterback. You did a pretty good job actually containing him, shutting, holding that offense down to 14 points. Yeah, man, they, um again, 
merchant got a great thing going over there. Great program. Um, we knew, you know, it'd be a hostile environment going into Chippewa Valley. Uh, coaches did a great job, man. My staff preparing the boys, you know, for this road trip that we had. Um, you know, big shout out to our strength conditioning coaches. We all know at this time of the season, you got a lot of people banged up. Um, you know, so keeping guys healthy is always our number one goal. Um, but again, we we went into that game, you know, with with basically all of our pieces for the most part that we needed. Um, but again, that's just a testament to our strength conditioning coach, James Cooks, getting them strong through the off season, you know, because playing 13, 14, hopefully 15 games, right? That's that's tough. So Again, we went to a really good program in Chippewa Valley. Um, the boys showed up again, like before. I know it's cliche, but it's really true. You got to have a great week of practice. So we had a really great preparation week, which allowed us to, um, you know, kind of stay focused e- even on the road. Um, talk about that game offensively. Obviously, Zeke had a big, big game. He had four total touchdowns here, two to two to Juwan Jarrett, two to Xavier Bowman. Um, talk about the development that Zeke's been doing for you guys this um heading into a senior year here this senior season yeah it's been doing really well man the game's really slowed down for me you can kind of see each year as we you know go you know his leadership and, and just his command of the of the offense um he puts us in right positions where we're not in there you know that's one thing you guys don't see oftentimes we may call the play they may line up a certain way you know he'll get us out of that get us into something better and that's just the trust that we have for him um you know as that senior quarterback He's been starting since a freshman, so he got a lot of experience. Obviously, talk about your ground attack, obviously. I mean, people look at South Bend Arson Tech and say, you guys are a pass-heavy team. You know, you can throw it all over the place. An RPL-type team. So talk about how your ground attack's been really critical to this run this postseason. Yeah, man, it's helped us out a lot. You know, we know we'll go into certain games because we have so much talent at wide receiver. We know we'll go into certain games and we'll have a lighter box. Um, So, you know, we knew that in order to win in, you know, November, you kind of got to be able to push that thing on the ground. So, you know, through all year we've been working on it. Our O-line's been responding really well, running backs really well. So uh, our ground game is something that we really pride ourselves on, um, you know, because we know that we need it in November. And obviously you look at a course coming up here. You guys have a rematch with West Bloomfield. I just talked to Coach Hilbers um, talking about um, you guys. Obviously great opponent, great team. Obviously you guys have that chip on your shoulder after losing last – after losing – um in week eight, 31 to 20. So talk about having to play West Bloomfield in the next round here in the state semifinals at um, Troy High School. What's your thoughts about playing at Troy High School? Yeah, man, you know, it's a neutral site playing at Troy. Um, you know, always fun playing those guys. You know, they're um, kind of our crosstown rivals, I guess you can say. Um, great program, man, what he's done over there um, with those young men. I know they got a great senior class just as we do. Um, they got us. They were definitely the better team when we played in week eight. Um, but, you know, we just excited at the opportunity to get back out there. And, and I'm proud of the OAA, you know, for having two of the four teams in the final four. Actually three um, if you count so, Harper Woods. Well, there you go. Three. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, it's, it's just, it shows again, testament to our league and how tough our league is. Mm-hmm. And obviously you look at, of course, the, um, so when you look at West Bloomfield, obviously you know about Rick Nance, you know about, they're proven players. You know that they're very good defensively. So when you look at West Bloomfield on film, what was your initial thought process when you look at the Lakers on film? Just what you said. They got, you know, great defense, um, explosive offense. Um, you know, they're tough up front. You know, all things that, again, traditionally they bring to the table. Um, so, you know, we got to definitely, you know, prepare for these things and, and you know, kind of, or well, not kind of, but we got to have a great preparation week just like the other weeks, right? I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's absolutely a semifinal game, but it's also just another game, right? So we, we got to approach it no, no different than we approached every week so far, you know, control our emotions, not get too high, not get too low, um, kind of stay even kill um, and, and just execute. And then, of course, you know, let's say if you do win that game against West Bloomfield, um, obviously then you have the division, then you would have the Division One State Final at Ford Field, where you would take on either Davison or Belleville. So I want your thoughts on, on both Davison and Belleville as well. Like what is what you've seen about those two teams that, you know what I mean, really curious is you. Yeah, man. I, again, I, you know, you see highlights online on, on Twitter and things like that. I haven't actually seen neither of those teams, you know, as far as like watch film for real, but you see the highlights. And so one thing you know about both of them um, is they have a lot of talent, right? So, 
one thing that jumps off the page are, are, you know, how talented they are. They got some great athletes. They got some great linemen. Um, so again, you know, all four teams that are left, you know, seem like they belong here. So it's, it's, it's going to be exciting to see, you know, hopefully we win. Um, and, and if we do, you know, exciting to see which team will play. Obviously, of course, the big one, obviously, of course, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, when you look at the run that you guys have had this year, um, obviously, you know what I mean? Um, the run that you've had, um, you know, I mean, like winning the white, I mean, like just getting to the postseason, going, I mean, winning against beating Detroit Cast Tech twice, you know, now you're here. I mean, like, so talk about, you know, what's been the motivation for you guys, you know, to get to Ford Field this year? Um, you know, we got a lot of seniors on this team, a lot of them who've been playing since they've been uh, actual freshmen and sophomores. So, you know, we, we knew going into the year that this was a very special team, uh, senior led team. So, you know, we, we just kind of poured into them and, and they poured into the rest of the team and their confidence, man, um, you know, along with their work ethic throughout the entire offseason, right, leading up until August when we started camp, you know, it's just been phenomenal. So. Um, they they know how to lead. Again, they they handle adversity really well, um, and that's kind of why you see the results that we've seen. You know, this all started you know back in the off season for sure. It's not something that just happened in August. And then of course, you know, early on in the year, obviously you had that very tough schedule um, against Detroit Cast Tech. You played against Harper Woods. You played against Groves. You played against them um, Clarkston. I mean, you you went there and won all those games. I mean, like that tested you guys for sure early on in the year. You know, and then, of course, you went in the West Bloomfield and, you know, and lost that one, um, obviously. And I know that was a wake-up call for you guys. So, when you look at that regular season matchup, um, you know, like, going back going back to that game, um, do you think that, you know what I mean, like, obviously, but from now from now to then, you know what I mean, I think you guys have been playing much better ever since that West Bloomfield loss. You guys have gotten confidence. You guys have really started to play. I think everybody's seeing what South and Arson Tech is what what's been made about i mean like known well known that everybody's been known around the community yeah i agree man um we definitely had a tough schedule out the gate um which kind of you know kind of showed us who we were um anytime like you said you can open up with Cass, then you got clarkson harper woods groves all in the first four games you're going to find out real quick what you know <laughs> what kind of kids you got uh, so for us to go four and oh during that streak was great um, then we got to uh, West Bloomfield uh, week eight and we and we lost the game. And, you know, when you turn the film on, right, you're always going to watch the mistakes that were made. And, you know, mm-hmm. hats off to West Bloomfield, played a great game and kind of forced some of those mistakes, you know what I'm saying? So we, we, we know uh, what we need to clean up. Um, so, you know, again, we got to get to work, man, and practice and film and, and clean up those mistakes so we can't have a repeat of last time's mistakes. And you know it's always hard to be a team twice in one year. And you know, obviously, with, you've already had that with Detroit Cast Tech. I'm um, beating them twice this year. Um, mm-hmm. So before I let you go, um, Coach, obviously, um, obviously coming into the um, coming, I mean, obviously, we've already talked about West Bloomfield a lot. You know, they're well coached. I mean, like obviously. Um, so I'm gonna ask. I asked Coach Hilbert this earlier. What's it gonna take for Southfield Arts and Tech to win this game and get to Ford Field? Um, starts with today. Um, you know, today is Monday and, you know, we got practice and we got film and we got, we're going to lift some weights today. So it honestly starts with winning every single day and going one and oh through the week, man. So we want to go one and oh today, two and oh tomorrow. Then by the time we get to Saturday, we would have put ourselves in position to win the playoff game. Right. But if we don't have a great week and great week of preparation, then we won't have a chance on Saturday. Right. So mm-hmm. the boys know that the boys understand it. So, you know, we definitely got to get to work today. Obviously, Coach, um, congratulations on your winning your first regional title in school history. I forgot to ask this question here. How did it feel? How did it feel for your for your team to win their first regional title in school history at Southfield? It feels great, man. Um, you know, really proud of the boys and this coaching staff, man, and, and you know, proud of this community. Um, you know, we got a lot of great um, family and friends, and you know. Uh, peers and staff members and everything, man, that, that roots for us. Um, and they're in our corner. So it feels really good. Um, the community is happy. The kids are happy. You know, just keep things in perspective, right? We got a goal, you know, um, and, and we've been accomplishing our goals all year so far. So, again, it's really well or feels really good to, to win the regional, um, win the districts like we did. Um, so, again, 
we're just trying to go one and zero, man, every day, every week. And then, of course, you look at a course. I know you're not thinking about next year, obviously, because I know you do lose a lot of talent. Um, obviously, you look at Southfield. Um, I'm very curious about, I mean, like about the future of Southfield Arts and Tech football. So, so how's the how was the sub RC program been going? Went this year for you guys, and how was that? How's that program been going? So the future is really bright, man. We have um, we start about four to five, depending on the week, sophomores, man, on on the O line and the D line. So we've got a really, really young, but really, really good line, right? Um, as far as athletes, you know, we definitely lose a lot of senior athletes. Um, but, you know, here at South, man, that's honestly, I've been here going on like nine years. And that's one thing we've never lacked, to be honest with you. You know, my, my JV and freshman team have a bunch of good athletes on their team. You know, find that line, man, that's football. So as long as we can keep the big boys up front, um, you know, going and going strong and they have a great offseason, I think we'll be just fine. Okay, um, thank you really much, Coach. I'm Southfield Arts and Tech Coach Aaron Marshall. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. Yep, you too. God bless, man. Take care. Yep. Okay, that was Southfield Arts and Tech Coach Aaron Marshall here on the podcast this week. Of course, previewing the game. Obviously, they got West Bloomfield on Saturday. We're gonna pre- we've already we've got both coaches' sides on both on both um both teams. And when we come back, we're gonna talk to Harper Woods coach um. Rob Odin about the Pioneers coming up here on the podcast. All right. Welcome back to OI Now here. I'm Sammy Tamina here. We got the coach of the Harper Woods Pioneers, Coach Rob Odin. Welcome back to the podcast, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me, Sammy. Um, obviously, of course, when you look at Harper Woods, um, you know, the postseason path, obviously, people look at a course in Division Four. Um, obviously, you know, the the schedule this season. I mean, like playing against Division One and Two teams, it, it's really benefited you guys, especially in this postseason run. Absolutely, I think it prepared us for everything we were going to face, um, and in some aspects, uh, over prepared us. You know, uh, I don't think any of the teams that we'll face, and there are some great teams. I just don't think they are the caliber of teams as the OAA white and red teams that we had to play this regular season. Um, obviously talk about your, um, obviously talk about having a play against, um, in the post and you opened up against a really good Croswell Lexington team. I mean, I'm telling you, when I looked at that match and when I looked at your bracket, I was really, I mean, I was really worried about you guys when you played Croswell Lex. I knew how good Croswell Lex was, the program they had, especially in the thumb area. Cause I know the thumb area very, very well. So what was your initial thought process of having to play against Croswell Lex first? Well, we thought that uh, it would be a, a great test coming out the doors of the playoffs right along the lines of finishing up the regular season. Um, Croslex was a, a really, really good team. We had never played them before, but we had followed them in years past and um, know about their success and their tradition in their program. We knew it would be a, a, a great test for us, and we were kind of banged up going into that game, so we had some initial concerns. And then in that game against Croswell Lex, obviously Stephon Buford, he had a big, big game in that one, especially in the second half. Um, talk about that second half when you had a you were guy you guys were down thirteen to six and then Buford kinda took over that game. Yeah, we were down um a score going into the halftime. We started that game with seven starters out. You know, mm-hmm. guys that were nicked up and, and kind of banged up and I, I didn't want to risk really further injury some of them could have went but they wouldn't have been you know playing at a very high level but at halftime four of those guys actually came to me and said coach I'm well enough to play in this game and I think that was the difference maker for us is one going to more of a dual threat running quarterback and then two adding four guys that's really helped us make this run from the beginning so that's kind of how we opened it up in the second half. And then, of course, knocking off a very good Croswell Lexington team. That was huge. And it, and it helped also having them at home, obviously having home field advantage, you know, having the most points in Division Four. That has been a really huge thing for you guys for having this run. Yes. Uh, home field advantage has been great for us. One, you know, we're on the new turf field, but not having to travel and – um do all of those things on game days, being able to determine which day you play and what time you play has been a blessing for us. 
you know, uh, accumulating all those playoff points from the schedule we play has been a tremendous blessing. And then, of course, obviously, let's talk your game against Marysville. Of course, Marysville, I know, is another team you haven't seen on the um, on the schedule. Obviously, talk about having to play them in a district final, um, but on a district final. Well, we knew Marysville would be tough. You know, I've had we've had my staff has had some past run-ins with Marysville. We played them twice previously at East English Village, and then we played them. Uh, actually, these kids. My current team played them as freshmen. They knocked us out of the playoffs as freshmen. Um, so uh, that was the COVID year. Mm-hmm. So we knew that they were strong in their run game, and they uh, did some things in non-traditional offenses that we hadn't really seen all year. So we knew that they would present some separate challenges for us as well, but they were a great test for us too. And then you knock them off. And then, of course, you know, comes the Saturday afternoon game against Carlton Airport. Um, first of all, first, um, I do, um, I do want to ask a little question here. Um, why a Saturday game? You know what I mean? Decide to play on a Saturday afternoon instead of like a Friday night. Well, in my mind, and, and this goes back to my days at my previous schools, when you reach the regional final and you know that the semifinals are on Saturday at one, we want to get our kids acclimated to playing in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So the regional final, if, and when we can host it at home, will always be on the Saturday in anticipation for us playing in the semifinals the following week on a Saturday afternoon. It's a little bit different than playing, you know, at 7 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about your opponent. That that Talk about Carlton Airport. Obviously, it's a team that you haven't seen before. Of course, they've been, um, you know, they're, they're down in Monroe County in the Carlton area. Um, very good year for them, the Jets. I mean, like, they, they started off leading you guys early. Then you guys took over late. You know, you guys took over. Obviously, the, the quarterback play of Nate and um of Nate and Stepan um, took over that game. So what was your thought process, obviously, when you, um when Carlton Airport started off um with the lead early? Well, our thought process was, one, we had to limit the big plays. Mm-hmm. and their running back and quarterback are four-year varsity guys. You know, we did our research, um, and they were very strong and big and physical, so we knew we would try to contain them and as much as we could. Um, they jumped out on us. We turned the ball over, you know, and they capitalized on that scoring drive. So we had to play from behind a little bit. You know, we had some adversity during the year. Once again, our schedule kind of prepared us for that. But once we were able to get some extra opportunities from our defense, I think our defense created four turnovers. Yep. And then, you know, we're having the balanced offense that we have. We're kind of hard to deal with on offense. And when you get four extra opportunities, some of them things are going to break. So we were very fortunate to get out of that one because they're a really good football team. Obviously, you look at, of course, the um, quarterback play of Stepan and Nate has been really instrumental obviously so talk about we talked about you know the two quarterback system you know what I mean that you guys have with both different styles I've been really impressed especially with Nate's play um you know kind of like you know what I mean what he's what he's been doing in the air he had he had a big game last week against a very good Carlton Airport defense yeah he was able to uh capitalize and and do some some plus one stuff with the RPO game you know Croswell kind of had their hands full trying to contain our three-headed monster at running back. So they had to kind of play closer to the line of scrimmage than they probably wanted to. And we got we got some guys on the flanks that can uh, make some big plays. So, you know, Nate's primary objective was to get the ball out of his hands and into the hands of those guys that can make plays. So throw short, but let them run long. So that was kind of our philosophy on that. And we broke some big plays in the passing game. And then of course talk about your um your nephew Dakota. I mean, like he had two touchdowns. I mean, like just impressive, like about fifty yards and a forty three yarder. I mean, talk about how important Dakota's been for you guys. He's been very instrumental for us. Um started the season with a a, a, a collarbone break, so he missed the first four games. But um he's a kid that's been born to do this. You know, his dad is our receiver coach. You know, I'm his uncle and I'm the head coach. And he's he's kind of like Jacob, man. He's been in this thing and running this offense since he was six years old. So now that he gets to do it, 
with these guys. He's kind of playing the game in slow motion for a freshman. And then also talk about Kobe. I mean, like Kobe, t I mean, like you're running back. I mean, like I'm telling you, I mean, like he has looked really good all season long. So talk about how Kobe's been doing for you guys. Kobe's been killing it for us. Um, statistically, is is off the charts. He's averaging 10.1 yards to carry. You know, when he gets it, he breaks it. Um, he's kind of the uh, – in between the tackles guy for us, and then we'll switch up to go with an outside runner. But Kobe has has been instrumental in the screen game. He has developed his game away from the ball, which means he's blocking very well right now. And um, he's kind of just been kind of our workhorse of all three of the backs. He's the one that's had – he's the primary ball carrier. And uh, he's been doing some great things for us. He's a two-year starter, and he's a junior, so he'll be coming back for another season. And then, of course, you look at, obviously, one thing that's been bothering me a little bit with you guys has been the penalties. I mean, like, I know the penalties have been just, you know, it's, it, it, it hurts at times, but, you know, but when you look at it, and I noticed this in the game against Clarkston, when you guys had a penalty against you guys, you just went and just said, you know what, let's go burn them deep. You have a big play there and a big play there. So talk about the penalties, you know what I mean, being a little bit of an issue for you guys. Yeah, it's, 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 as a head coach, it's, it's nerve wracking. Some of it is in our control. Some of it is not. We play a very physical brand of football and our guys are taught to play to the echo of the whistle. So we're getting some calls on some, you know, some continuation of some blocks that's going to the ground and we're kind of over aggressive with it. So we're working hard. We even bring referees out to practices on Tuesdays and Wednesdays to really help us out and say, hey, is this holding or is this legal? Or we're trying to play within the confines and the rules, but, you know, we're, we're a smash mouth football team. So we take the good with the bad. We're trying to eliminate all the personal fouls and big penalties and control what we can control. Mm -hmm. And then obviously now we're going to preview your um, state semifinal opponent, um, Goodrich. Um I want to get your th thought process first on the location. Um, we've been playing played at Livonia Franklin um, coming up on Saturday. Um, obviously, Livonia Frank, Livonia, Livonia and Harper Woods. I mean, a little bit southwest of where Harper Woods is. So, do you think the MHA got it right with the location for your state semifinal matchup? I um, <laughs> I, I just want your think, opinion. Just want your I opinion. Think, I think it's a neutral site, but it's not. It's not like when I think neutral, I'm thinking split the difference of the two schools in half and pick a spot. I mean, poor so here I would be perfect. It, yeah, I think the location kind of favors us in terms of proximity. We mm -hmm. have a shorter commute. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it is a little southwest of here. It's about 30 minutes from where we are. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, I don't. I don't think that they got that one right. You know, I was expecting something along the lines of Chip or Dakota or, or something up 75. Maybe. I was thinking poor Huron, honestly, honestly. I was thinking poor Huron because, like, you think about it, you know, Harper Woods, if you just go 94 north, you know what I mean, for Goodrich, obviously right. taking 69, you know what I mean, you know, combining their poor Huron, it would have been perfect for both yeah, sides. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't played Goodrich since my days at Crockett. When we played them, ironically, I think it was a regional final. They had Kurt Ellsworth. He, like, led the state in rushing that year. Mm -hmm. I had Brandon Graham, and they had Kurt Ellsworth. So it was a heck of a game out there. And, obviously, you're taking on you're taking on that same Goodrich program. Of course, you've seen how Goodrich has done in the postseason. Of course, the league they play in, in the Flint Metro League, they play against some some solid teams like Holly, Linden, Lake Fenton. Um you know, obviously, so talk about what was your initial thought process when looking at Goodrich? Honestly, we've been watching Goodrich since scrimmages, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping an eye on them from afar. We are familiar with the program. We we know what they do up there. They're blue collar. They punch a clock and bring a lunch bill and go to work. They're hard nosed, smash mouth. They all those things we believe in as well. Um, so it's, it's we, we're going to have to play our A game and be up to the challenges and match their intensity and physicality. But, um, like I said, we've been fans from afar, been watching them all year, actually. So, 
you know, we knew at some point for the road through Ford Field was going to have to go through the semifinalists, I mean, the finalists, as well as probably the eventual, you know, returning champions. But great program over there. Them guys are year in and year out, right back in it. And um, these guys have a championship pedigree. And obviously, if you get to Ford Field, you're either going to be having to play the Grand Rapids South Christian or Portland. Um, obviously, Grand Rapids South Christian, I think it's the defending Division Four state champion. So what is your thought process on both those two teams? I know you're focused on Goodrich, but what was your what's your initial thought process on those two other teams on the other side of the bracket? Well, I haven't um, taken a look at them, but I do know that they're both two tremendously great programs. And um, these semifinal matchups, I think it kind of played out right. I think we are the top four teams in Division Four. I think that that matchup, be it South Christian or Portland, will be uh, a heck of a game. One that we would look forward to. You know, once you reach Ford Field and you're on that carpet, you play anybody one time. So we're looking forward to the opportunity to face whoever it may be. And obviously, when you look at um, obviously when you look at the path, obviously you look at a course. Um, when I looked at the playoff matchups and when they were announced, and you know, you know, I like to do like my projections and all that with playoffs. And I'll be honest with you, I thought personally that you would have went to took on East English Village Prep first round. You know what I mean? I think because it's a little bit closer geographically. I didn't expect the MHA to send you guys up north. You know what I mean? To play the thumb teams in the district. Um, obviously, you know, Marysville is in St. Clair County and then, um, and then I'm um, Crosswell Lex in Sanilac County. So I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't expect that, but I know, I, I know, I know you didn't expect that either. <laughs> oh, it was definitely a curveball for us watching the selection show. Um, but going in after playing the gauntlet that we played, we'll play anybody, but we didn't expect, you know, East English Village is literally 1.7 miles away from our school. Mm-hmm. So we thought that there was no way possible we wouldn't see them in our district. You know, we thought we would go that route, you know, with them and Divine Child and Carlson Airport in the district. Mm -hmm. But when we seen that we were heading up north, you know, we had to really come back together, reconvene and, and, and refigure some things. And you did, and you did, and here you are. You're in the state semifinals. Um, I mean, like, what would it be like if for this community, if you guys make it to Ford Field, how important would that be for these kids in your community? It would be my, it would be monumental, you know, to take this small community over here and and, and galvanize them and get them behind us and and make that trip downtown to Ford Field would be amazing. You know, I'm just looking at the turnout from the regional final, and I'm finally at a place where I see you know, class of 55 and 65. And, you know, Harper Woods has had football for 72 years. Mm -hmm. And everybody was out with their Letterman jackets on and had, you know, tailgating going on. So bringing the community together is part of the reason that we took this job and we're doing what we're doing. So for us to finish this journey at Fort Field would be a tremendous blessing. But then you got a very good Goodrich team coming in, um, heading down to Livonia. Um, obviously, we talked about playing Goodrich. I mean, like, obviously, we know, I mean, like, obviously, you know how tough that program is. Um, what's it going to take for Harper Woods to knock off Goodrich to get to Ford Field? It's going to take a balanced offense. It's going to take uh, a run-stopping, relentless defense. And it's going to take... Uh, all 42 guys. I mean, it's going to take everybody on this team collectively to get it done. So we understand what we're up against. We're up for the challenge. And all of the things that we're going to face this week is getting ready for this game. But it's going to take our best effort, most definitely. How important is playing in the OA going to be in this game? It's going to be key. You know, the OAA has prepared us for any and everything. You know, it's taught us a lot about ourselves. It's taught us a lot about our potential, and um, it has definitely prepared us for the rigors of playing teams like Portland, South Christian, and Goodrich. Before I let you go, Coach, um, fine, I mean, like, any final thoughts, obviously, when you look at um, 
looking at heading into this ma- heading into the matchup. Obviously, um, the players' mindset. Um, everybody, um, everybody confident going in there, heading in that game. Oh yeah, the guys are riding high right now. Um, getting getting locked in and uh, focusing on the film and the preparation. Uh, the beauty to this playoff season, knock on wood, is we go into it healthy, and I think. You know, coming out of our regular season, we had we had a, a string of in, in, injuries, but being week four of the playoffs and in the semifinals, we'll have 100% of our team in uniform this week, and that's a blessing. That so is a- the guys are excited to finish this journey together. Okay, um, thank you really much, Coach Harper Woods, Coach Rob Oden here. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Good luck this week against Goodridge, and um, hope we get you guys get ready to go to Ford Field. Um, good luck this week, Coach. Thanks, Sammy, for having me. Yep, you too. God bless. Yep. Um, of course, when you look at Harper Woods, that was Coach um, Rob Oden here um, on the podcast this week here. Um, obviously, we got some other news to talk about before I do my projections for the week here. Um, we got some basketball news to talk about here, obviously. Um, at Stony, we're going to go girls basketball first. Um, actually, boys basketball first. Um, Byron Johnson's the new head coach at Farmington. Um I'm curious to see how, since we do start boys basketball tryouts, um, I'm really curious to see how Farmington does, especially with um, Johnson taking over the program. Um, he's going to have to build all three programs, and that's going to be a ch- very interesting challenge for them going forward there and that for Farmington. Um, just seeing how everything's going to go for that for Farmington, that's going to be the key is can – can the players, can the can the coaches earn the trust of players and then vice versa? That's going to be the big question I have for Farmington going forward there um, with them. Um, on the girls' side of things, um, <laughs> um, Oak Park's got a new girls' coach. Um, I think Tyrone Johnson's the new head coach there. Um, I think, you know, when you look at him, I mean, I'm curious to see what he's going to do at Oak Park. Um, I think it'll be really interesting to see how um, Coach Tyrone does with that program um i mean she t- he takes over for coach Chantel corson who stepped down um harper woods is a new girls basketball coach um also we, we were i was at media day um so that is a um it's gonna be um so but he's gonna have a very veteran heavy team this year with the pioneers and then stony creek obviously um columbus williams takes over of course he was at um Utica Ford is an assistant under Corey Joseph. Under um, uh, uh, he was an assistant at Utica Ford last year. Um, so he'll have a really interesting task ahead of him to turn around the Cougars. Um, you know, obviously retain the success that they've had. Um, Stony Creek's got a veteran-heavy team. Obviously, when you look at Sarah La Prairie, Merrick Schlaubach, Izzy Avage, um. You know, Stony Creek, they're going to be a scary team this year. But the questions, as I said this on the podcast um, a couple months ago, it's going to come down to is can the players and the coaches, can they get on the same page? That's going to be the question mark there. Um, so that's my take on the basketball front. Um, we're going to have more of that. I'm going to have a special basketball preview show coming up in a couple weeks. Um, so we're going to have a special preview show on that. Um, volleyball. Obviously, you got Clarkston. Um, they're still playing in. They're still playing. They got. They're in the state quarterfinal. Um, going back to St. Clair Community College. Um, had a nice win against them, Flushing in the regional final. Um, but when I look at Clarkston, you know they do have. They do have a history of some mental lapses, and that could be a problem for them if they're. Um, you know, obviously, when you have those mental lapses, you know that's never a good thing. Um. But when you look at Clarkson, I mean, especially in games in set threes, they've usually dominated those sets, and you know they've shown their will. And usually, for a Coach Allison Smith team, if you win set three, you know that's going to be the key to everything. So when you look at Clarkson right now, the way that they're playing, it just comes down to set three, you know, with them. And I think right now, the way the Wolves are playing, I mean, like they are right now on a mission. The way that they're playing, um, and Coach Allison Smith. I mean, especially with the play of Ma- uh, Marge Smith, um, um, the way that they've been playing, and Paige Gettlebrook obviously back for that team, um, that says a lot for Clarkston. Um, obviously, when you look at that matchup, um, they do open up with Macomb Las Cruz North in the state quarterfinals. Um, it's not Birmingham Marion, though. I mean, like, 
you know, obviously Clarkson lost another shot at him. Um, obviously with the way that that team lost, um, they lost in the state quarterfinals last year with that ACL injury to Getterbrook. Um, it was a really tough blow for them um, in that matchup. So when you look at Clarkston, I'll tell you what, I think they got a good chance to knock out Macomb Las Cruz North. Um, you know, and I think they will get to Battle Creek. Um, if they get there, then they would have that rematch with either Birmingham, Marion, or Farm Hills Mercy. Um, both Catholic League rivals, obviously with the way Birmingham Marion's been playing right now. Yeah, they were very young early, but they have really managed to pick up their game. And the way that they're playing right now, they might be a scary, scary team. And then a possibility of having to play Grand Haven looks very possible, obviously with the way that they did against Rockford in the regional final. Um, Rockford, one of the top teams in the state of Michigan, um, really... It's going to be really interesting where Clarkson goes. We're going to keep an eye on the Wolves on their run in the, throughout the state playoffs, obviously. So it'll be something to really keep an eye on for sure. I mean, but Clarkson, I think they're favored against Macomb, Lance Cruz, North. And then the it'll be really interesting if it's Birmingham, Marion for um, Clarkson. But <coughs> you can never, ever count on a Loretta Vogel team with Farm Tales Mercy. So that'll be a really interesting matchup down at Dearborn between those two Catholic League rivals. So... We'll see what happens, though, in that matchup. All right, now we're going to go to my picks here for week number, um, for week 13 of the football season here. Um, you know, when you look at it here, I've talked to all three coaches today. Um, I'd like to thank all three of them for calling this week here on the podcast. Um, <laughs> let's go to Division Four. I mean, got Harper Woods and Goodrich. I've seen Goodrich play. Um, looked really good against Hazlitt. Um, but in this game here, I, I like the way Harper Woods has been playing. I like the Pioneers a lot. And I'm telling you what right now. I'm calling it right now. I think Harper Woods is going to Ford Field. I mean, I like where the Pioneers are at. They're athletic. <laughs> if, they can, if they can stay disciplined, I think the Pioneers have a great chance to pull this one off. I think Harper Woods has a great shot here to win that game against Goodridge. Um, I don't like the location where the game's at with Lavoni Franklin. Um, but... I just think athletically, if Harper Woods turns this into an athletic game, it's going to be their advantage. Um, but if penalties doom them, that could be a problem. Um, I mean, Goodrich is a really tough team, hard-nosed team, hard physical team, but they have not played the schedule that Harper Woods has, and that's why I'm going to say the Pioneers win this one because of the schedule that the OA brings to them. And I think the Pioneers win over the Martians in that game. So I got Harper Woods going the state, going the forward field. Um, and then you have West Bloomfield and Southfield Arts and Tech. I mean, this is going to be, this I think is going to be a classic between two rivals who know each other, um, really well. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech is senior heavy. West Bloomfield, we know what they got. Both teams got proven quarterbacks. Both teams have proven offenses. Both teams are stout defensively. Um, in this game, it's always hard to beat a team three twice in one year. And South Harrison Tech has done that against Detroit Cast Tech. Um, but West Bloomfield is a completely different animal, though. I think that, and for West Bloomfield, it's going to be a tough, tall order against a good, a good, a good Southfield team, a really good Southfield team. So this is going to be fun. I think it's going to be a tense drama. It's going to be a tight drama. But I'm going to take. I think, you know, and I think I might take a lot of guts here, but with the apologies to Southfield, I'm going to take West Bluefield in this one here. Um, I think it's going to be a 34-31-30. It's going to be a 34-31 game. It'll be a heck of a game. It could be an offensive shootout, you know, but it wouldn't surprise me if Southfield wins this game as well. I mean, both teams are really, really good teams. I mean, they deserve to go to Ford Field. One of them will go to Ford Field for sure. Um... So I, I really like the um I really like the um I do like the Lakers in this one, but if the Warriors go to Ford Field, it would not surprise me either. I mean both teams have been really worthy all year long to getting to Ford Field. And it would it'll be a heck of a matchup between the Lakers and the Warriors um in that matchup. So you know, and then the, that winner will take on either Davison or Belleville. I know people have been saying, like, who do you got between Davison and Belleville? You know Belleville's got you know, all that talent. You got Bryce Underwood at quarterback. I mean, like, then there's Davison. Obviously, we know they're tough. They're gritty. Um, they 
I mean, and Belleville's blown out some really good teams, Celine and Northville especially. Um, Davison's gone through Lapeer. They've gone through Rockford um, and Grand Blank. So in that game here, I might, I mean, like, I'm not going to name it on air. Uh, it'll be on the blog at Um, But if it's Belleville, it'll be really interesting if it's Belleville. If it's Davison, it's also interesting as well. So whoever wins that game between West Bloomington and Belleville, we're going to preview that game next week here on the podcast. We're going to break that one down as well. Everybody want to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 50 at blogspot.com. Um, I've already got the, I mean, I'm already starting to work on the basketball previews coming into the year for both girls and boys basketball. So we'll see what happens going forward. Everybody want to sign off here. I'd like to thank all three um, coaches, Coach Odin, Coach um, Hilbers, and Coach um, Marshall for calling in today, this week here on the podcast. All right, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. All right, take care, and I'll see you then. God bless, and see you all next week. God bless. Y'all.